877-970-2996. The answer. 877-970-2999. It's Morano on AM 970. The answer. Yeah, you ain't seen my best. Checkmate. In a game of chess. Globalist. See me as a threat. Free thinking. Got a world at my neck. Huh? And my paranoid picture. Malcolm X in a room full of pigs trying not to bust a sweat. Hey, Neil Tyson need to loosen up his vest. They probably write that man one. Double check. Hey, I'm over here on this side. 523. Uh, you know, I'm not the biggest rap fan in the world, but if I'm going to listen to a hip hop song, I enjoy. I enjoy a song with a message, and this song by a rap artist known as B.O.B. is all about why the earth is flat and what saps those of us that think the earth is spherical are, including, and he calls out by name, Neil deGrasse Tyson. He got into this Twitter feud with the scientist Neil deGrasse Tyson and then released this rap song called uh, Flatline, in response to it. And I wondered, uh, first after reading that story, how many folks there actually are that really, truly, honestly, still believe the Earth is flat. And then I see there was this big conference in North Carolina that had hundreds of people show up at the Flat Earth International Conference. And these people paid, in some instances, hundreds of dollars to hear a number of speakers, all of whom have the same message, which was essentially that everything that you were taught in school about the shape of the earth is incorrect. One of those speakers joins me on the phone right now. He is the creator of a fascinating, I must say, uh, YouTube series called the Flat Earth Clues series. His name is Mark Sargent. Mark, good morning. Thanks so much for uh, getting up early. I know you're in Washington. I know how early it is out there, so my gratitude is compounded all the more. No worries, Frank, and thank you very much for having me. The bakeries haven't even opened yet. (laughs) So uh, let me begin. So, uh, look, I wouldn't begrudge you if this was, you know, uh, some sort of a social commentary or some sort of a, um, a satire, but you are completely serious, right? When you say the earth is flat, you're not joking around, you're not poking fun, you're not using this as an opportunity to, you know, get your own name out there. This is sincere on your part. Oh, no, I'm absolutely completely serious, although there are some weeks I wish I wasn't. <laughs> so let, I'm sure you uh, learned the same, you went to the same schools I did uh, that had a globe in the classroom mm-hmm. in second grade, third grade, fourth grade. When did you come to believe uh, that, the, uh, that the Earth was not a globe, and why did your thinking change? I first looked into it in 2014 and got into it the same way that most of the community does, which is I tried to debunk it. I looked at it like your your listeners are probably listening right now thinking this is the stupidest idea I've ever heard in my life. And I said, well, you know, what? I'll give it a I'll give it a few minutes and try to shoot this thing down. And then nine months later, the beginning of 2015, I went the other way and I said, you know what? In a court of law, I can't prove the globe anymore. So I made a series of videos called Flat Earth Clues. I put them on YouTube, which is basically just a cry for help. Just said, look, somebody help me figure this thing out because I can't do it anymore. And the opposite happened, where all of a sudden I had people calling me saying, you know, tell me more, and other people adding information, and then subject matter experts, and then interview people. And now I've got a book on Amazon. Who would have thought? But yeah, we all started out the same way. We tried to debunk it. So anyone's listening to my voice now, don't Google flat earth. Don't do it. Don't do it. It's a rabbit hole you will not get out of. Everybody thought they could, and, and here I am. My first question, Mark, I guess, in looking into this, and the first question most people have asked me when I told them I was going to interview you this morning, Mm -hmm. is the same, which is, what about all the pictures that we see from space which show the Earth as a globe? Uh, What about those? Don't those carry any weight with you? No, no. In fact, it's what use the line from Mission Impossible. It's worse than you know. I not only am I saying that the entire Apollo program, the United States Moon program, is fake. I'm saying that 
the only reason NASA was created in 1958 was to keep this thing under wraps. That the United States and the Soviet Union basically figured out that all the world's a stage, that we're in a planetarium, a terrarium, a Truman show, for lack of a better term, and they just tried to keep this secret going. They decided not to tell the public for the last 60 years. So no, that absolutely nothing you see uh, that comes from space, which is, by the way, all military, uh, is, is correct at all. It's all fake. So uh, two things. You believe all the astronauts that have gone into space, including the ones that have taken photographs, everybody, they're, they're lying to the public? Yeah, yeah, had to, and and it wasn't. Again, it's not a, a horribly malicious thing, you know. Some say, I've even had people say, "You calling all those astronauts liars?" It's like, well, I, you know, they did it for you know God and country. They did it for national security reasons. But but yes, I mean, remember all your all your astronauts, especially in the United States, they start out as Air Force. They sign the non disclosure agreements and they do what they're told. So if they're told, it's like, look, you're doing this for a good reason. We just don't want to upset the population. Yeah, that's exactly what they're going to do. So yeah, every at the 500 people that have claimed that they have been in Earth orbit or higher are lying. Yes. And you you say that this all began in the 50s. Now we all remember, you know, that oh, that was the height of the Cold War. So mm -hmm. in the midst of the Cold War. With nuclear weapons pointed at one another, you, you believe that the United States and the Soviet Union actually, as distrustful as they were of one another, uh -huh. partnered together on this massive global line? Yeah, it was too big. This thing is so big that even a Cold War it doesn't doesn't have hold a candle to it. The United States and the Soviet Union were both down in Antarctica, and, and it all started, yeah, in 1956 when Admiral Richard E. Byrd, the United, youngest United States Admiral in the history of the Navy, made Admiral at age 41. Uh, he was down there looking for the better part of 30 years for the outer marker, wherever, you know, this thing, this ice shelf meets the dome. And the Soviets were down there at the same time. It's like, you know, it, it was too big for one country to keep a lid on it. No play on words there. And, <laughs> well, and that's what they did. Well, so, and if people are just tuning in, we're talking with Mark Sargent. He's the creator of the Flat Earth Clues YouTube series. Very popular. Hundreds of thousands of views on all of his videos and um, tens of thousands of subscribers. As shows you there's certainly a lot of interest in this subject. Um, before I get to why you came to this conclusion mm -hmm. that it's flat, um, why would everyone be lying the astronauts the world governments the scientific community uh -huh. why would what what interest what motivation would everyone have to be lying to the world well first by the way by the way it doesn't have to be everyone as far as you know people say well you're talking about all pilots and all scientists and all all world governments no 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 in this case it's not like the the manhattan project where you had hundreds of thousands of people creating the atomic bomb and everyone kept you know a pretty good thing you know kept kept their mouth shut this is something where less is more. You compartmentalize. Only out of all the NASA people, let's say 99% 9.9 of, of the NASA people, they don't have to know anything. So all the wrench turners don't have to know anything. It's only the telemetry guys. Scientists don't have to know. The pilots don't have to know. And even if they, even, even if a pilot did kind of figure it out, who are they going to tell? Because you're, you're going to get benched immediately. So as far as motivation goes, no, it's the stability of society. More thing. Remember the the narrative, the globe narrative. You've seen the globe in your classroom since you were six years old. That's something that's been going on for the last 20, 25 generations. So it's not you were born into this. It's not only your parents and your parents' parents. It goes back 450, 500 years. So why would they keep it going? The the narrative's gone too far. Is there's potential there? Well, real quick, uh, academically, the entire academic world would be turned upside down almost immediately. Uh, as, astronomy and astrophysics, they'd be wiped out. All your remaining physical sciences would have to rebuild from the ground up. Uh, economically, you would have to shut down world markets for uh, a, a month just to see if any everything you know, because you know how twitchy people are. I mean, Donald Trump catches pneumonia tomorrow. The world markets are going to be affected. And then, of course, there's the spiritual side of things, which is, are we talking about intelligent design? Are we talking about the handprint of God? Yeah, maybe not. But at the same time, we're talking about a power that's greater than ourselves. What, what I'm saying is, if all the world's a stage, and if you're inside it, the big thing is, you're not alone. 
you've never been alone. That is a massive, massive question that's all been in the heads of everybody at one point or another. And the powers that be don't know how the general population is going to react. So they've been trying to kind of soften us into it. And I think only now is it starting to come to light. 877 It's Morano on AM 9 Morano. 38, it's Sunday morning. All those years ago, as George Harrison sings, we thought we proved that the world was round, not flat. I mean, there'd been a lot of theories about the shape of the world. I think Columbus believed that the world was shaped like a pear. Other different ancient civilizations believed that the world was a tree or that it was actually a, on a, the back of a turtle. Others simply believed it was flat. Um, the flat earth movement appears to be making something of a comeback. And one of the leaders in that flat earth movement, is one of the intellectual leaders in that flat earth movement, is the creator of the Flat Earth Clues series on YouTube, Mark Sargent. Mark, do we have you back? Uh, yes, and sorry about that. We had some wind up in the Northwest, and somehow during my little monologue, uh, my tuner tripped, and uh, we, the power blinked out. So I don't know what the last thing I said to you was. I, hopefully I finished my sentence. Absolutely. No, you certainly did, and okay. I'm, I'm glad it wasn't not these these sphere truthers that were trying to silence you. Uh, it was, uh, we're, 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 not, we're not accusing anybody of anything. It's a conspiracy. Um, hey, now, um, so my question is, Mark, what, what evidence do you have yeah. to support your thesis that the Earth, you know, you believe not only is the Earth flat, but yeah. that it, it's, it's encapsulated by a, a giant invisible dome. Yeah, yeah, that it is the Truman Show, that it is you're living basically <clears throat> in a Hollywood soundstage. Uh, what, but what proof do I have that the Earth is flat? Uh, the easiest way to do it for anyone that, that wants to go out there and check it for themselves, and this was not part of the clues, it was just something that the community came up with rather quickly, and that is you're not going to be able to find the curve anywhere. Now, I know people are saying, oh, no, no, we've seen the pictures of space from NASA. It's like, no, if you can discount those, how can you prove that the Earth is a sphere? And by the way, don't say round or circle, you know, sphere, that's two-dimensional, sphere or ball or globe. How can you prove it on the ground? Uh, easiest way is to go to the beach. Any, any beach you want, grab some sort of decent digital camera. Uh, there's a whole bunch out there. The the one that our community has been using a lot is the the Coolpix 8, 8900. Wait, Coolpix 900 by Nikon. It's got like a massive zoom. And find a boat that is off in the distance, and then let it go. Let it go off in the horizon. You think it's gone over you know the, the the curvature of the Earth, which is eight inches. And I'm not trying to weird anybody out with math here. It's eight inches per mile per mile. So, uh, you know, every mile times itself. So two miles is two times two, which is four times eight is 32 inches. Three times three is nine times eight is 72 inches. So after a while, you should see boats go away, right? We all have seen this at the beach. But now with the digital camera technology, which has gotten very, very good, you can bring those boats back into frame a long, long way, and they shouldn't be there anymore. The, like, like, for example, uh, 50 miles is 50 times 50 times 8, which is pushing about 1,700 feet. That's 1,700 feet on the other side of a hill, basically. And you can pull back anything. In fact, we put a challenge of anybody at like 150 miles or less, show us an object which should be over the other side of the curve that we can't see with digital technology. It's there. Anybody can do this. Uh, a, a lake, an ocean. You can you can do this anytime you want. That's that's the probably the most obvious thing that people have been drawn to in terms of find the curve. We can't find it. Uh, so the the proof that you're offering that the Earth is flat, mm -hmm. not not a globe, mm -hmm. is that we don't see any curves, and that with digital technology, a boat can go out to sea, and we still see it on a flat. Plane. Right, That's right. It, when it leaves your, when it leaves the visual eyesight, your natural visual, visual eyesight, and it leaves your binocular eyesight, and leaves even you know telescopes, the digital technology has changed. Basically, HD has, has changed it. Where now you can bring boats or lighthouses or objects in the distance into frame. The Chicago skyline is a perfect example. They, you know, people say, no, no, it's a mirage. It's a mirage. No, we've gone out there with boats and let the video run as we're driving across this thing. 
And it, again, the Chicago skyline from the other side of Lake Michigan, 50 miles, that's 1,700 feet. Those buildings should be gone. And you can see them uh, clear as, as anything. And they're not, they're not superior mirages. They're not inverted. They're not wavering. They're not severely distorted. And that's, that's probably the simplest explanation for if anyone wants to you know, start going down this rabbit hole. If anybody, by the way, has a question for Mark uh, about the Flat Earth Movement or wants to offer your own uh, suggestion or you know, piece of evidence as to why the Earth is a globe and not flat, you're welcome to call at 877-970-2999. Let me ask you, though, Mark, yeah. why do you think... I, I get thinking that the Earth is flat. I can understand that mm -hmm. for some of the reasons that you, you mentioned. Why do you then go the extra step and say not only is the Earth flat, but it's actually encapsulated in a giant dome. Where did you get that from? That started when I was looking, again, I was trying to connect the dots. When I was trying to disprove this thing, eventually I got to the point where I said, okay, if I had to hide the world, how would I do it? Or if I had to design the world, how would I do it? And when I was looking at everything that the major governments were, were doing back in the 1950s up until now, I mean, really things got weird after about 1956. I started to notice a pattern. Uh, the first thing you would look at, and I, I don't want to go into chapter and verse and biblical stuff, because the Bible, if anyone's out there, you know, strong Christians, you know, the Bible's a flat earth Bible. That's a whole other thing for another time. But the United States and the Soviet Union working together uh, starting in 1958 started doing high altitude atomic testing. Every nuclear weapon used from 1958 for four years up until 1962 were, was fired straight up. And that is one of the first things you would do. You know, men, you know, once you figure out we're sealed in, the thing that Admiral Byrd was looking for, you would try to break through it. It's like, oh, there's something there. You know, let's, let's see if we can punch through it. And the first three shots they did were low megatons, and megaton was a tough thing to come by in the, the 1950s. And then they just kept firing high kiloton weapons for the next four years. They were mapping out the sky. They were trying to figure out, and they stopped exactly at the same time. You can say, oh, it was a moratorium. It's like, no, it was planned. The United States and the Soviet Union at the highest levels, not necessarily ground troops, uh, have been working hand in hand how to figure this thing out. And the reason why you would fire atomic weapons over and over again for four years is you need to know, because against, eventually you're going to have to fake a space program, you need to know when to arc over your rockets without crashing them. Uh, because it's not it's not that high up there. We're not talking about necessarily a snow globe in terms of the arc. We're talking about like a, a shallow sports stadium to where it's very wide, but it doesn't have to be very high. Because remember, most of the population lives between sea level and one mile. Airplanes cap out, civilian airlines cap at about 10 miles, spy planes about 20 miles. So, and the, the atomic testing, web, the, the weapons they were using for high altitude, they were shooting them up around 400 kilometers, 400 miles, give or take. So that's the first thing I would look at when it comes to how this thing, you know, how high this thing is and, and why it was. Um, plus, you want to seal it in. You, you want to make it a pressurized system. You want to control everything about it. You don't want to leave it anything organic, which means the jet stream, which means the underwater conveyor system. It's an enclosed terrarium. I mean, everything is artificial about this. You're, you're living in, uh, seriously, uh, 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 not necessarily a simulation as much as it is a mechanical system. And... Um... And again, we're talking with Mark Sargent. He's the creator of the Flat Earth YouTube series. Um, the what about the fact that when you when you look at the moon, uh -huh. um, they they say the, the what we're seeing when the moon is not a full moon is the shadow of the Earth and it's curved. Right. It isn't? Do you? subscribe to the conventional wisdom that that's the shadow of the earth that we're seeing in the moon oh no no not at all because think about this and i know this kind of dates me but if anyone's ever been to a planetarium uh, and planetarium has been around for a long time i mean back sure. in the day you know, be, on weekends when they weren't showing stars and moons they were doing what laser floyd and laser led zeppelin and crap like that you can do just about anything in the night sky when it comes to a planetarium. You can simulate waxing and waning crescents and uh, lunar eclipses and all the stars and, and comets to, to, to a lesser degree. You can do this all in a planetarium now. So what I'm saying is that when you walk out of a normal planetarium, you're walking into a much bigger one where, yes, the sun and the moon, and I know it's a huge concept and we don't have a ton of time, where the, the sun and the moon are not, you know, the sun's not 93 million miles 
miles away and the moon's not 237,000 miles away. They're both very, very small. They're very close and they're in this system with us. Uh, not only that, you want to throw another wrinkle in that'll blow people's minds. The moon is self-illuminated. The moon isn't reflecting anything from the sun. It is its own projection system. You want to look up something fun, I'll, I'll give you quick, quick words for you. Uh, moon temperature. Type in flat earth moon temperature. The moon is generating what appears to be a cool light, a cold laser, which is actually cooler in the moonlight than it is in the moon shade, which is the opposite of the sun. You know, the sun is like 90 degrees in the sun, 80 degrees in the shade. In the moon, it's 50 degrees in the moon moonlight and 60 degrees in the moon shade. We've seen uh, variations up to 13 degrees. That's not possible. If the the moon is reflecting some of the sun's light, it should be neutral at best, and it's not. Do you believe that other planets are round? No. Oh, spherical? No, 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 no. Um, spherical, yeah. No, it's okay. Again, planetarium. I've, I've had people say, well, you know, I'm an amateur astronomer. I've seen the moons of Jupiter. I've seen Saturn's rings. But when I go, okay, fine, take a pair of binoculars, walk into a planetarium. Tell me, does Jupiter look more or less spherical because of the binoculars? And, and they say, well, it, it does, that's not fair. It's like you're in a building. I'm going, yeah, that's what I'm saying. Uh, it, they look spherical inside a planetarium. They're just part of a projection system. They're just lights. No different, and that, and that goes for the stars, which look different at different parts of the of the Earth as well. Yeah, uh, that's yeah. all part of the planetarium style projection system that you maintain is what we're seeing in the night sky. Yeah, yeah, we we're doing this in in some uh, simulations now with software, and that is say, well, you know, the stars. It's a great argument, by the way, where the stars move counterclockwise versus clockwise versus north and southern hemisphere. I'm going, yeah, it's it's something we don't do in planetariums because they're not big enough. But if a planetarium was big enough enough super easy to do uh, multiple projection systems in in software it's called instancing and we've been doing it we've been doing this now for the last 15 years it's extremely easy to do um three final questions we only have about uh, 90 seconds left so okay. i'm going to ask you to be brief but i hope we can have you on okay. again in the okay. future um one is do you have any um scientific background or anything that would lend credibility to your argument that the, the earth is not what we always thought it was no no anyone with a master's degree in any physical science or higher is never going to touch this thing with a 10-foot pole the conditioning is just too much and then you know one of the things we always hear from from folks that are proponents of climate change is they always uh, say that folks that don't believe that greenhouse gas emissions cause climate change that they Barack Obama makes this re metaphor repeatedly he, uh, he always uses the flat earth reference is what he says if I say that the world is round and someone else says it's flat that's worth reporting but you might also want to report on a bunch of scientific evidence that seems to support the notion that the world is round. So um, a lot of folks uh, are ver on varying sides of the climate change debate. Just out of curiosity, Mark, do you have a take on climate change in general and greenhouse gas emissions? Oh, yeah, and it applies to the flat Earth. If this is an enclosed system, that means that anything we do inside it is amplified. And yeah, I absolutely believe in climate change. Look, you're burning every car that's driving on the road. I'm not knocking cars is basically just a small furnace. You multiply that by billions and then add 100 years to it. Yeah, the system is trying to compensate for so it. No when Obama compares the climate skeptics to yeah. flat earthers, he's actually got it backwards. The flat earthers do believe in climate change. The flat earthers do believe in climate change. Well, I mean, I believe in climate change. Absolutely. Okay, but, but yeah. And, and then is there any evidence that you would find satisfactory? Is there anything that could be shown to you um, that you would say that you would say, all right, you know, I've been putting a lot of energy and effort into this the last few years, but mm -hmm. I was wrong. The Earth is actually a globe. Yeah, put a 4K or higher camera on any rocket, have the footage run continuously from the pad up until the Earth starts curving down below us in the distance, and then let us be able to analyze the footage. It's never happened in the history of a space program, which should be well, there. Mark, we, uh, I do hope we can talk again. Uh, if folks want to learn more about the Flat Earth Movement or your videos, where's the best place for them to go? Go into Google and type in Flat Earth Clues or go into YouTube and type in just Flat Earth, but my stuff will be under Flat Earth Clues. Uh, thank you very much, Mark. I appreciate you getting up early on a Sunday. <laughs> Happy to do it. Thank you. Right. If you want to comment but on my any stuff will be under Flat Earth Clues. Uh, thank you very much. Thanks, Mark, for calling. We appreciate it. Thanks, guys.
Alright, bye-bye.